This is uh, video number six in our series of educational videos to instruct the people on the science of government and thereby learn how to have government by consent. This video's title is Democracy versus the Republic, Changing the Marxist Narrative. Tyranny naturally arises out of democracy. Plato. Benjamin Franklin said, a democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Jefferson said, a democracy is nothing more than mob rule, where 51% of the people may take away the rights of the other 49. Wake Up America, Article 4, Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. Stop calling us a democracy. There are five basic forms of government. They are monarchy, ruled by one person, oligarchy, ruled by a small handful of people, democracy, ruled by majority of the citizens, republic, ruled by law, and anarchy, no government, mob rule. Presently, there are 159 republics in the world. Among them are China, Russia, Korea, Iran, Iraq, and Cuba. What they all have in common, along with all monarchies, democracies, and oligarchies, and anarchy, is rule by man. Democracies always lead to mob rule and eventually transforms to an oligarchy often hidden behind the facade, democratic republic, people's republic, socialism, Marxism, communism, or democracy, to name a few. Thomas Jefferson rediscovered a unique type of republic, one ruled by nature's God, and not men, mirrored under Israel, that was established by God through Moses in 1400 BC. This was demonstrated by Jefferson and Franklin proposed seals that expressed Israel's exodus out of Egypt. Jefferson added a backside of the seal representing Israel's common law brought to Britain in the 5th century by two Anglo-Saxons named Heingist and Hossa from the Germanic tribes from the north. Unfortunately, the two-sided seal of the United States were represented by Rome, by an eagle, and Egypt, by a pyramid, whose law traces back to Babylon, the exact opposite of Israel. Jefferson immediately recognized that the law they brought to Britain was in harmony with the Bible. History revealed that the people of Britain, having the Bible, developed a strong bond with the Anglo-Saxons because they were living the principles of the Bible. Jefferson strongly surmised that these people might be the remnants of the lost tribes of Israel. Jefferson also found a connection with the European intellectual movement of the late 17th and 18th centuries, emphasizing reason and individualism rather than tradition. Said movement was driven by philosophers uh, such as Descartes, Locke, and Newton, and its prominent exponents Exponents including Kant, Goethe, uh, Voltaire, Rousseau, and Adam Smith. It is under these influences that Jefferson discovered Americans' freedom formula, writing America's foundation of law, the, found, uh, the Declaration of Independence, which placed the fate of American into the hands of the King of Kings to live under his law and receiving the blessings of his liberty. Our founding fathers were all well read and believed that they were acting and building a new nation under the providence of God. Our founders believed that the United States was the new Israel of the Bible, as clearly represented by Jefferson and Franklin's proposed seals, and as long as we live under his law, we are. It was through collaboration of Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, who fathered the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison had a rich and long friendship. They collaborated on numerous political ideas and decisions, 
that had, that had shaped our country. Madison first met Jefferson during the Virginia Constitutional Convention in 1776, but it wasn't until three years later that the two cemented their friendship, working together daily, while Jefferson served as governor of Virginia and Madison was on the Council of State. Although Jefferson certainly acted as a mentor to Madison, the two men had relatively equal relationship, and they collaborated well. Jefferson and Madison were both deep philosophical thinkers. It is important to realize that the United States is the only republic that is a republic under the authority of God, therefore the only lawful republic in the world. Authority from God empowering his people. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind, and write them into their hearts, and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. A Covenant with God, America's Foundation, Declaration of Independence, where we read, When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal stations to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the cause which impelled them to the separation. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of a right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may, may have a right to do, and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Authority from We the People to Government Preamble to the Constitution We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Bill of Rights The conventions of a number of the states, having at the time of their adoption the Constitution, expressed the desire, in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers, that further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added, and is extending the ground of public confidence in the government will best ensure the beneficent ends of its institution. Declaration of Independence Whenever any form of government becomes destructive to our rights, it is the right of the people to alter government and institute new servants. Article 6, Subsection 2 This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuant thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, 
and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the Constitution or the laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. James Madison The people have an in indubitable, unalienable, and indefeasible right to, put, to reform or change their government whenever it be found adverse or inadequate to the purpose of its institution. Samuel Adams the natural liberty of man is to be free from any superior power on earth, and not to be under the will or legislated authority of man, but only to have the laws of nature for his rule. Thomas Jefferson When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. If a government either by malfeasance or neglect fails to protect those rights, or even worse, if the government itself begins to violate those rights, then it is the right and duty of the people to regain control of their affairs and set up a form of government which will serve the people better. These rights, which have been bestowed by the Creator, they cannot be altered or eliminated at any time. That is, they cannot be taken away or violated without the offender coming under the judgment and the wrath of the Creator. The Supreme Court of the United States. Under our system of government, upon the individuality and intelligence of the, the citizens, the state does not claim to control them except as his or her conduct, conduct to others, leaving him or her the sole judge as to all that affects them. The very meaning of sovereignty is that the decree of the sovereignty makes the law. A consequence of this prerogative is the legal ubiquity of the king of kings, his majesty, God, in the eye of the law is always present in all his courts. Though he cannot personally distribute justice, his judges, which are the jurists, are the mirror by which the king's image, that's God's will, written in their hearts is reflected. For laws are made for us, we are not made for us for the laws. Every man is independent of all legislative laws except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any institution formed by his fellow man without his consent. We the people have been providentially entrusted via natural law to dispense justice and were provided legal recourse to address the criminal conduct of the judiciary and our representatives. The people have the unbridled right, by law and in law, to impanel their own grand juries and present true bills of information, indictments, and presentments to a court of justice, which is then required to commence a criminal proceeding under natural law. Democracy is just the first step to an oligarchy. Article 4, Section 4, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. In 1993, Speaker Representative James Traffican Jr. of Ohio addressing the House revealing the bankruptcy of the United States into the congressional record. All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating with a de facto status in name only under the emergency war's powers. With the constitutional republican form of government now dissolved, the receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government for the United States. This new form of government is known as a democracy, being an established socialist communist order under a new governor for America. The word republic comes from the Latin res publica, which means simply the public thing, or more simply the law. Democracy, on the other hand, is derived from the Greek words demos and kratine, which translates to the people to rule. Democracy, therefore, has always been synonymous with majority rule. Therefore, we are a republic 
which is ruled by law, or a democracy ruled by the Marxist mob. Our founding fathers reviled democracy and gave their posterity a republic. As Thomas Jefferson said, the Republican is the only form of government which is not eternally at open or secret war with the rights of mankind. Knowledge will forever govern ignorance, and a people who mean to be their own governors must arm themselves with the power which knowledge gives. James Madison It's time that we, the people, change the narrative. The inaugur inauguration of Thomas Jefferson as president was a monumental moment in American, even world history. Every detail of the day was analyzed, from Jefferson's decision to walk to the event instead of riding in a carriage, to his plain dress instead of a fancy suit and a sword. However, the most important part of the whole affair was the one line uttered in the middle of his first inaugural address. He said, We are all Republicans. We are all Federalists. This was Thomas Jefferson's way of shouting from the rooftops that this was a nation of law and not of men. Federalist Papers Number 1 Hamilton the necessity of a government at least equally energetic with the one pr proposed to the attainment of this object, the conformity of the proposed Constitution to the true principles of a Republican government in its equivalence to our state constitutions. Federalist Paper Number 10, Madison. Democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention have ever been found incompatible with personal security or the rights of property, and have in general been as short in their lives as they have been violent in their deaths. Federalist Paper Number 48 In a democracy where a multitude of people exercise in person the legislative functions and are continually exposed by their incapacity for regular deliberation, and concerted measures to the ambitious intrigues of their executive magistrates. Tyranny may well be apprehended when some favorable emergency to start up in the same quarter. Anti-Federalist number 74. There is not a tincture of democracy in the proposed Constitution, except the nominal elections. Every free man of America ought to hold up his, uh, this, this idea to himself, and he has no superior but God and the laws, as indication that something has been present. Anti-Federalist number 10. True Democrats are in general fanatics and enthusiasts, and some few sensible, charming madmen. Anti-Federalist number 18 and 20. A confederacy of republics must be the establishment in America, or we must cease together to retain the republican form of government. From the moment we became one great republic, either in form or substance, the period is very shortly removed when we shall sink first into a monarchy, and then into despotism. Before we established a government whose acts will be the supreme law of the land, and whose power will extend to almost every case without exception, we ought carefully guard ourselves by a Bill of Rights against the evasion of these liberties, which it is essential for us to retain, which it is of no real use for government to deprive us of, but which in the course of human events have been too often insulted with the wantonness of an idled uh, baripetry. Auburn Herbert, 
a 19th century British politician and writer, described democracy like this. Five men are in a room. Because three men take one view and two another, have the three men any moral right to enforce their view on the other two men? What magical power comes over the three men that because they are one more in number than the two men, therefore they suddenly become possessors of the minds and the bodies of these others? As long as they were two or to two, so long we suppose each man remained master of his own mind and body. But from the moment that another man, acting heaven only knows from what motives, has joined himself to one party or the other, that party has become straightway possessed of the, possessed of the souls and the bodies of the other party. Was there ever such a degrading and indefensible superstition? It is not the, the true lineal descendants of the old superstitions about emperors and high priests and their authority over the souls and bodies of men. We constantly hear congressmen, senators, presidents, and even the United States Supreme Court justices refer to America as a democracy. Are our elected servants that ignorant of our Constitution, our history, and our heritage? Or is there a methodical covert conspiracy hell-bent on destroying our republic? Just how close are we? Or should I say, how close were we? I think the following says it all. When President Barack Obama, during the 2016 White House Correspondents' Dinner, where he predicted Hillary Clinton presidency, in 2017 said, the end of the republic has never looked better. And then the unexpected happened. By God's mercy and divine providence, the coup failed, and President Trump was elected in her stead and declared in contrast, in America, the people govern, the people rule, and the people are sovereign. I was elected not to take power, but to give power to the American people where it belongs. The word democracy appears nowhere in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, or its capstone Bill of Rights. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution guarantees to every state of the Union a Republican form of government. James Madison, known as the father of the Constitution, states, we are to exist under Republican constitutions, referencing both the federal constitution and the state constitutions, not constitutions under a democracy. Government by the multitude is a form of government wherein the populace has the whole power and administration of its own hands. The abuse of democracy is mob rule. With the introduction of representative democracy, which is a form of government where the powers of sovereignty are delegated to a body of men elected from time to time who exercise them for the benefit of the whole nation, which such a democracy unshackled by law, the Constitution, the results would be absolute tyranny. They already ignore our Constitution in this case and our efforts are over the past 20 years proven. But the times they are changing. There is a new sheriff in town. The swamp is being drained, the people are rising, and the resistors of the law will be tried in a court of law for treason. In a republic, a constitution or charter of rights protects certain unalienable rights that cannot be taken away by the government. Even if it has been elected by a majority of voters, in a democracy, the majority is not restrained in this way and can pose its will on the minority. Although we chose most of our representatives and local heads and states and judges democratically, they are all governed by the law of the land, which restricts their powers and jurisdictions in order to conform to the will of the people through the Constitution by authority vested in the people via natural law. Therein God.
Unlimited democracy is just like oligarchy, a tyranny spread over a large number of people. Aristotle. In a 1786 letter to the Marquis de Lafayette, George Washington wrote about the risks of democracy. He didn't believe that most people could be trusted to make good decisions. Thomas Jefferson said, Democracy is nothing more than mob rule where 51% of the people may take away the rights of the other 49%. Benjamin Franklin said, Democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, said, Democracy is evil because it allows the will of many to trample the rights of the few. Democracies have been found incompatible with personal security or the rights of property, and in general uh, been as short in their lives as they have been violent in their deaths. Benjamin Rush thought democracy was devilish, stating, A simple democracy is the devil's own government. Hamilton said, We are a republican government. Real liberty is never found in despotism or in the extremes of democracy. The ancient democracies in which the people themselves deliberated never possessed one good feature of government. Their very character was tyranny, their figure deformity. If we incline too much to democracy, we shall soon shoot into a monarchy. A monarchy. John Adams said, Democracy will soon degenerate into an anarchy, such an anarchy that every man will do what is right in his own eyes, and no man's life or property or reputation or, or liberty will be secure, and every one of these will soon mold itself into a system of subordination of all the mortal virtues and intellectual abilities, all the powers of wealth, beauty, wit, and science, to the wanton pleasures, the capricious will, and the execrable cruelty of one or very few. Remember, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There never was a democracy yet that did not commit suicide. John Marshall said, Between a balanced republic and a democracy, the difference is like that between order and chaos. John Jay said, Too many love pure democracy dearly. They seem not to consider that pure democracy, like pure rum, easily produces intoxication, and with a thousand mad pranks and fooleries. John Quincy Adams said, The experience of all former ages hath shown that of all human governments, democracy was the most unstable, fluctuating and short-lived. Edmund Burke said, Of this I am certain, that in a democracy the majority of the citizens is capable of exercising the most cruel uh, oppression upon the minority. Winston Churchill said, The best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. Stop calling us a democracy. As President Trump said, In America, the people govern, the people rule, and the people are sovereign. I was elected not to take the power, but to give power to the American people where it belongs. The problem is that the people don't know how to take and implement that power. Thomas Jefferson said, I know no safe depository of the ultimate powers of society but the people themselves, and if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion by education. This is the true corrective of abuses of constitutional powers. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. An enlightened citizenry is indispensable for the proper functioning of a republic. Self-government is not possible 
unless the citizens are educated sufficiently to enable them to exercise oversight. It is therefore imperative that the nation see to it that a suitable education be provided for all its citizens. Educate and inform the whole masses of the people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. Join us at NationalLibertyAlliance.org to learn the science of government by consent and receive the power, your heritage.